Hi, sixth grade. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube network. Um, it's great to be with you. I hope you had a great Easter and um, relaxed and had some fun. Um, and we'll be getting ready to start our new project. Uh, let's start with a prayer first. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, I love some of the work I got. Thank you for sending it to me. You did a great job. It looks wonderful. Um, please make sure when you um, drop off your work in my Dropbox uh, that you have your name and your grade on it. So you put your name on the right-hand side with your grade or the left-hand side with your grade. That's your choice. But please make sure your name is on it. Um, you normally have at least two weeks to do your work, um, so just take your time whenever you're bored or, you know, want to relax, um, do some art. It's, it's fun, it, you know, it, it goes quicker if you're doing, sitting down and doing something, so enjoy it. Um, today's artist will be Andy Warhol, and I'm going to read to you a little bit about him, and then I'm going to show you some of his artwork. And then I'll give you the assignment that you're supposed to do relating to Andy Warhol. Um, we're working on simpler stuff um, while we're doing art uh, on this level. Um, we're going to work, uh, we've been working basically on a lot of pop artists because you can uh, do that a lot quicker and it doesn't entail a lot more work the way we normally do in class. Um, not everybody has a lot of art. Uh, equipment to work with. So I'm trying to base the classes on marker, uh, color pencil, and just pencil because I don't think a lot of people have uh, pastels or any of that kind of art equipment to work in. Um, if you do and you want to try it in those um, mediums, mediums um, sorry, uh, then please do. Um, that's up to you. You know I want you to have fun at what you're doing. I'm going to read some of um, the history of Andy Warhol, and probably once you see the artwork I'll be showing you, you will recognize a lot of his stuff, because a lot of his stuff was made very commercial in clothing, in posters, and you'll probably recognize his work when I show it to you. Um, Andy uh, Warhol grew up in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, he was the son of a construction worker. His birth name was Andrew Vahola. Uh, so instead of uh, Warhol, it was Warhola. Um, when he was eight years old, he caught a liver disease and it caused his limbs to uh, spasm. Uh, so he was sick for a while. But while he was recovering, his mother was an embroiderer and artist, so she taught him how to draw. He was a quiet and shy child, but loved drawing, photography, and watching movies. When Andy was 14, his father passed away. His father considered Andy uh, the brightest of his children and had saved money, working really hard and saved money so um, Andy could go to college. When he graduated from high school, he went to Carnegie Mellon University to study art, and that's a really cool school. Um, after graduating from college, Andy moved to New York, uh, and that was in 1959, to make his name as an artist. Andy became a very successful commercial artist. Um, on one of his first jobs, his name in credits was misspelled. It was misspelled to Warhol, uh, and he liked that better because it didn't. The name didn't, you know, pronounce well in his Slavic nationality. So Andy liked the name and decided to keep it. When he was a commercial artist, he did 
a lot of ads for shoes, uh, for perfumes, for fashion. Uh, so when you open up a magazine and you see a beautiful perfume bottle and it's advertising the perfume or you see some drawings of shoes and it's advertising uh, the shoe company, um, that's the type of stuff he used to do and he became really famous because of his style of doing that um, because he did the drawings as an illustrator that nobody else did his style. And so um, over the next 10 years Andy did quite well working as a commercial artist. He won prizes for his work and was known for his unique style. However, Andy wanted to do more with his art. He wanted to do something new and different. And that's when he got involved in pop art. In 1961, Andy came up with the concept of using mass-produced commercial goods in his art. So uh, that means uh, mass-produced uh, goods is like the Campbell soup can, the Coca-Cola bottle, things that were mass-produced that people were buying. He called it pop art. He would use commercial images and reproduce them over and over again. So he'd make multiple um, pictures of it or paintings of it. Uh, one early example of this was a series on Campbell soup cans. In one painting, he had 200 Campbell soup cans repeated over and over again. Andy used that to create his pictures. And I'll give you an example of that. So you can see, this is a quick example. So can you imagine that he did 200 of these on a painting where he used a different color background, to the, um, to the color of the soup can. So as you can see, he used a red background here and the soup can was orange and blue. And then he put a green top on it. In this one, he kept the original colors. In this one, he did red again, but he did a light blue and a deeper blue and white lettering, right? Here he used the tomato, where he had the tomato soup, he used the orange lettering. And then he incorporated the red over here. Over here, he did a very, very muted yellow, very light yellow. And he did almost like an aqua blue with a purple. He did the uh, lettering in yellow. And this is, can you imagine doing 200 of these? I can't. <laughs> but anyway, he did. And he became very famous with this. And he, and he did different pictures also. He did Coca-Cola bottles with different color backgrounds and different color of the inside and different colors of Coca-Cola on it. Um, so I'll continue reading his story a little bit and I'll go along and show you some of his pictures. Andy also uh, used pictures of famous people. He would repeat the same portrait like he did over here. He would repeat that same portrait over and over again but use different colors and effects in each person. Some of the famous celebrities he did was Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor. And you may not know these stars, but I'm sure your parents do, so you can ask them. Um, and he soon became a very famous uh, celebrity himself. He opened a new studio called The Factory. Uh, he not only worked on his art there, but had large parties with very wealthy and famous people. It became one of the cool places to hang out in, in New York City. Andy was also selling a lot of his artwork. He became very uh, celebrity famous. Um, Andy was a different kind of artist. While many artists focused entirely on their art with no interest in personal fame or fortune, Andy wanted to be rich and famous. Some artists accused him of making art in order to make money. However, many of the images he created have become icons in the American culture. His paintings have grown in value as well. Actually, one of his paintings sold for $100 million in 2008. 